It's a beautiful morning in Beesden or near Beesden. Today we move on and we are going to go up, up. the remaining locks and to get ourselves at least to what's the name of the junction? Hurlston. Hurlston Junction. The junction with the Kangothan. Outside Nantwich. So it's gonna be a long day. Uh, sun is up, sun is shining, which means I need my hat or I'm gonna burn again. Yesterday we cruised with a really nice couple that we just happened to meet. Well, they left their mooring when they saw us going and they stopped halfway through our cruise yesterday to get water. But it turns out they moored five boats down from us and they're getting ready to go. So we've just spoken to them and we're gonna go through the lock stick with them today. So that's really good news. Yeah, that means we gotta get moving fairly quickly. So we're gonna get moving now. We've got Ooh, I don't know, maybe 500 meters to a lock that a boat has just gone up. <laughs> so there's going to be some, you know, resetting around. of the lock. Yeah, lots of fun. Um, and there's, I can't remember how many locks, maybe five. Oh, there's this, the iron one, which we'll have to go through separately. But then there's a staircase of two. Is it of two? Yeah, coming yeah. up as well. So. And then we're at the end of the whole thing. And no more locks till Nantwich. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Okay. It seems we've picked a popular time to depart. As we untie the ropes, a Black Prince hire boat facing the other direction pushes off and cruises past. We had moored between Bridge 108 and 109, where there are lots of convenient mooring rings. You get a great view of Beeston Castle from Wharton's Lock. We visited the castle on our way north. If you haven't seen that vlog, we'll link it below. This is the overflow channel that directs water past the lock when there is an excess of water in the pound above. Depending on the flow, the water can push the boat to the side as you pass. Do so you need to make sure you're not going too slow and adjust your steering accordingly? This is Beeston and Castle Wharf, the home of Chaz Hard and Hire Boats. Opposite the wharf are the pleasant visit to moorings where we stayed on our way north. So we're in the Beeston Iron Lock, which is so bowed uh, towards the top that they recommend you only send one boat through. So that we're doing, we're sending one boat through. The iron-sided lock was built by Thomas Telford in 1828 as a solution to water loss and unstable ground. We had roped the boat off, but made the mistake of opening the paddles too fast. You can see the boat being pushed around as the water enters the lock. We're certainly missing having a boat beside us in this one. Once we're through the lock, we pull over and help the boat behind us through opening the paddles much slower this time, and then we can proceed through the rest of the locks together. Just below Bunbury Staircase Lock is an Anglo-Welsh hire base. There's a boat coming down the locks and we can't see a space on the lock landing, so Michael tucks the boat into a gap between two of the hire boats to wait our turn while I walk ahead and help out on the lock.
The Bunbury locks are a set of two wide staircase locks at Bunbury Wharf. The lower lock is being filled from water in the upper lock. The fact that the top gates of the lower lock are also the bottom gates of the upper lock is what makes it a staircase. Now that the water is equalised, here we are moving together from the lower lock to the upper lock. There are some lovely brick stables that run alongside the locks, but sadly they are no longer occupied by horses. The section of canal which runs from Chester to Nantwich was once known as the Chester Canal, although it's now part of the Shropshire Union. These are the last locks on that section, and also the last locks which wide beams can use when travelling south, as all of the next locks are narrow locks. We arrive at Calvary hoping to use the service point, but find it occupied by two boats and all the moorings are full, so we find somewhere to hover with the boat until it's free. It doesn't take too long for one of the boats to move on, so we manoeuvre into their spot. Once we've disposed of our rubbish and recycling and emptied our liquids tanks, I break the news to George that there's no more walking for him today. We'll be riding on the boat the rest of the way. We are approaching Barbridge Junction and our timing couldn't be worse. We arrive at exactly the same time as a boat turning off the Middlewich branch. That'll be the route we'll be taking next, but first it's back to Nantwich to catch the train. This sign is a little out of date, as we discovered on our trip north, there's no water point here. So we're at Ice Cream Junction. No, it's real name. No, but it's where the Snug Breeze is, and apparently at the moment it's where the Langoffin is not. <laughs> well, um, it is there, it's just not working. It's not functioning, so it's, it's, it's out of order. So the locks are incredibly quiet, because obviously there's no point going up there, because you can only get a few miles, but there's still two lock keepers there. <laughs> I think they've got to be there for those people that are going those two miles. So basically, we've made it back from Beeston all the way to the outskirts of Nantwich. We're going to stop here for the night. It was a little bit fun mooring up because we were on the famous shroppy shell. Yeah. Which is a bit of concrete. It's Yeah, it's concrete that's just down there. And if it was, it's meant for boats with more of an angled draft than... A lot of boats who, I guess, come up here a lot, they have like tires. So they put a tire down the side of the boat, which just pushes them out like that much, which means they're not hitting the yeah. shoppy shelf. They're actually pretty ideal. And we haven't we haven't hit the shelf too much, really. On the when we've hit it, we've hit it too much. <laughs> it's been really annoying, on the, but it's been very uncommon. Yeah, on the official moorings, it, well, this is an official <laughs> On most of the official moorings, it's fun. But like we're on a section here where we're not really on the shelf, but then just a few feet up there, it sticks out a full six yeah. inches. And yeah. How was your cruise? Uh, it was good, you know, it was pleasant going through the locks with the couple that we met yesterday. They're efficient and friendly, friendly and it was, you know, it was just a nice day for that. There were a couple of points where it got a little bit busy, but it wasn't so busy that we really had to wait too long for anything. Mm -hmm. There's people waiting for us a few times. The, the real pinch point was because there's the one iron-sided lock at Beeston. Yeah. And so you're only supposed to go there through that one boat at a time. Yeah, it's like an automatic pinch point. So 
We went up, got pulled over to the side. There was no boat coming down at the time, so we dropped the lock so that our uh, partner boat could get in. They were starting to come in when a boat came up from behind, but then there's two boats up the other direction, and by the time we got to the next lock, there's even more boats coming down. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, yeah, the iron lock there is really quite slow. Plus, you have to raise it very slowly because the one boat that's inside there is going to shove around a lot. And the paddles downstream at the bottom gate, there's only one paddle working. So. Yeah, so it drains slowly. And there's no ladder inside of there. Um, I think it's kind of the worst example of health and safety on the whole of this canal at least because you get you get into that lock and if were something were to happen and you were down in the lock you couldn't get there's, there's no getting out it, it it doesn't feel good to be in there when the boat's shifting around like it's a fascinating piece of of you know sort of they needed a solution they'd done something similar on the on the uh, aqueduct and they went you know this trough idea would work for this in this place where there's these sort of shifting sands um, but you can tell from the fact that you have to go through one boat at a time because of the way it's bowed in. The it? stands have continued to shift. <laughs> it, it didn't really solve the problem. Pressure to burn the iron. Yeah. Then we went through the staircase lock, which was fine and much nicer to be with another boat. Not least because of someone else working the pedals in the gates. Yeah. <laughs> and you got someone to chat to, had nice conversations. Yeah, and then uh, basically found our way to the Cavalry, is that how it's pronounced? It looks like cavalry, but it's not got an R in it, so it's cavalry. Cavalry, okay, cavalry. If you say. Cavalry or cavalry, cavalry. Anyway, we got to there where there is um, some services and there was a bit of a busyness there. Which is surprising because it's not on the Canal and River Trust website that the service is there, but everyone knew about it. There's two boats using them and as soon as they moved off, we moved on, and then another boat moved on, and then there was a boat waiting for us. Yeah. And, and then the fuel boat was coming through, so it was very busy. And I'd gotten stuck in the mud a few hundred feet back, what trying to trying to wait. Yeah, I just wanted to keep room for people to travel through, so I pulled over to the side, and I rammed straight into the mud with the uh, the rudder. So, like, the rear of the boat was just jammed, and I was like, well, not going anywhere. I'll just, if somebody comes along, I'll deal with it, but until somebody comes along, I'll just sit here because I'm wedged. So I turned off the engine and just waited. Yeah, and then it was just a few miles, maybe four or five miles down to here. And we went past the junction with the Middlewich branch, which one of these days will go down. And uh, just as we were like... We were already sort of nosing through, and all of a sudden a boat came out. He like, reacted Aah! a lot slower. I didn't know if he was going faster, we reacted slower, but his boat was shorter, so in theory he should have seen you sooner than we saw him. Yeah. But I <laughs> <laughs> but luckily, we maybe just, our there, was, there was no actual. My reverse works pretty quick. Yeah, maybe that's what so. It is. And then he tried. He tried to wave me along like yeah. you go, He's you like, go ahead, and I'm like I'm already in reverse. I can't. He was like you go ahead. Well, your nose is in front of our nose, so you might as well go. And then they pulled over to let us pass like a little while later. And we we but, only had one stop, one more bridge we were like, to go. We're stopping after the next bridge, but we'd already kind of yeah. gone past. So we're gonna make some lunch. I'm gonna make some lunch, and then we're gonna walk and get ice cream. Of course we are. It's the only reason we've more tip. It's, it's, yeah. Snug Breeze is good. If you get here, go to Snug Breeze, get some ice cream. Get a lot of ice cream. Mind the shrubby shelf. Mind the shrubby shelf. <laughs>
So we hope you enjoyed the George Cam of our trip to the ice cream shop yesterday um, and that you're not feeling too nauseous after watching it. We have left the Hurlston Junction and come down to Namwich for the third time. Yep. And we're going to stop here so Michael can go to London tomorrow. Yeah, so i got to get on the train tomorrow morning. It's irritating because we don't really want to be in the same place, but at least it's relatively convenient to shops and stuff. I'm going to do a big shop today. We don't need that much. I just need... Well, a I, big enough shop to get you through I a week. I eat differently too. Like, I won't cook for me like I cook for us. I know. So, so I'm yeah. going to go buy all the chocolate in Nantwich. <laughs> I cook so healthy for yeah. Michael. How good was your dinner last night? Oh, so good. So good. You do. You really. You 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 spoil me with goodness. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to, uh, comment down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because we really like having subscribers. And if you really like having notifications annoying you in the middle of the night, click that bell for notifications. <laughs> we don't upload in the middle of the night. Well, depends on what time zone you're in. Okay. Right. <laughs> Got to think global. <laughs>